as most of us know, the laser is one of the most important inventions mankind has ever made. Almost 50 years ago, the first optical laser was made. That was a ruby laser. So in a way, we are celebrating the 50th birthday of the laser. 2010 has been declared the international year of the laser. So it's high time that we spend a couple of hours on understanding one of the most important inventions mankind has ever made. And an invention that lives with us day in, day out. So th these two lectures are in fact a part of my atomic, molecular and laser physics course. And I'm thankful to the large audience that has gathered today. So I will, uh, there are two approaches. Most of the material that I will cover today will be very natural for my class who has already taken about 20-24 lectures of the course. So it's going to be somewhat easy for them. But for the guests that we have, uh, I cannot of course cover all the material that I've been covering over the past three months and condense it into half an hour. So it's going to be a bit challenging for them, but I'll try to strike a balance. Sorry, I'm not feeling very well today, but let's, let's not, that shouldn't come in the way of the lectures. All right, so 1960, the first laser was made, a ruby laser. Theodore Mammon was the name of the scientist. But the idea for lasing came about 94 years ago, in 1916. And it was the ingenuity of Einstein that he could come up with the idea of what we call stimulated emission. Now, suppose we have a two-level system. There are two energy levels, A and B. These energy levels are inside an atom or an ion or a molecule. The energy of the lower level is Ea and the energy of the higher level is Eb. Now there's a finite energy gap between these levels. Delta E equals Eb minus Ea and every energy has to be equal to h bar omega where h bar is the Planck's constant divided by 2 and omega is some frequency or HF, if you're more familiar with F instead of omega. But there's an energy spacing between these two levels. Now suppose there's an electron that sits in the lower energy level. And an external photon comes in. That is, you place the atom inside some cavity and you shine light on it. And the frequency of that incoming photon the frequency of that light, omega, matches the energy spacing between the two levels. So what will happen? The electron will be excited and it will jump to the higher level because of the resonance condition. The incoming photon has precisely the same frequency as the energy gap. So this is called absorption. Now let's look at the entirely converse process. The same two energy levels and this time an electron sits in the excited level. Somehow it has been excited. You're given an excited atom. Forget the past, how this electron was excited. But nevertheless, there's an excited atom with the electron sitting in the higher energy level. Now it can't sit there forever. The electron has to jump down. It has to lower its energy. That's the way of nature. Every natural system wants to lower the energy. So this electron falls down. And in the process, it emits 
a photon of exactly the same energy h bar omega now the atom is acting as an emitter in this case the atom was acting like an absorber here it's acting like an emitter so this process is the process of emission and it is spontaneous emission it's a spontaneous process the electron does not need any external dictation to command it to come down it's in an excited state it will naturally come down on average the atom will remain in the excited state for a life for a period of time on average tau which is a lifetime of this excited state so these are the two processes that we are very well aware of and the these processes were well known in pre einstein times theek okay? hai now the ingenuity of einstein einstein ki rifat e khayal ye thi ki usne ek teesra process bhi define kar diya aur wo process ye tha ki if the electron is sitting in the lower state in the ground state sorry the electron is sitting in the excited state and it has not spontaneously decayed it has not come down and an external photon of precisely the same frequency shines onto the atom now there is no higher energy level if there were a higher energy level of spacing h bar omega then this incident photon could have excited the electron to a higher level but there is no higher energy level available so what happens Now this is a very strange uh, prediction by Einstein, which looks strange to us, but something that we will derive in a moment. What happens in this case is that this incident photon dictates the emission of another electron. The electron falls down; it is de-excited, and another photon is emitted in the process of the same frequency, omega. and the incident photon as well as the emitted photon are totally coherent they are totally coherent i will explain what the, what's the meaning of the term coherence so this third process in which you have an atom that is already in the excited state and you shine a photon onto it it stimulates the emission of an additional photon so one photon comes in and two photons go out one is the original photon and the other is the emitted photon so this process is called stimulated emission so these are the three kinds of things that can happen when a photon sees a two level system inside an atom an ion or a molecule now in quantum mechanics there are only two processes one is absorption and the other is stimulated emission spontaneous emission is in fact an artifact spontaneous emission is also stimulated emission in this guise but what is stimulating what is the stimulant photon in spontaneous emission it's vacuum Now if you look at vacuum the absence of matter the energy of vacuum is not really zero my physics class knows this very well vacuum has some energy which is called vacuum energy or zero point fluctuations so there are zero point photons even in vacuum so when this excited system sees a zero point photon or a vacuum photon it is it de-excites and emits a photon so spontaneous emission is also in fact stimulated emission in this guise but nevertheless for ease of understanding these are three distinct processes that can occur when a two level quantum system sees a photon theek hai
All right, so let's, let's now talk about rates. We have a large number of atoms inside a cavity. So we have to talk about statistics. And we have to talk about average rates of transition. Rates of transition means what's the probability that a transition can take place between these two levels per unit time. So if you take the absorption process, there's a rate associated with it. Let's call that R A to B. And this rate is in fact the rate of increase of the population of the upper state. DNB over DT, where NB is the population of the upper state. Now this rate has to be given by a constant. That constant is denoted B, B, B going from A to B. And it's, it also depends upon NA, the number of electrons in the lower state. Higher the number of electrons in the lower state, the higher will be the rate of absorption. And it also depends upon omega rho, where omega rho is the energy density of photons. How much photon, photons are available inside the radiation field with precisely the energy omega? Because in the process of absorption, a photon has to be absorbed. Therefore, a photon has to be available at this frequency. So the rate of transitions, making transitions from A to B is given by this expression. Now we have a rate of emission as well. Let's denote the rate of, of emission by R going from B to A. This rate of emission is the rate at which the upper level is depleted. The rate at which the upper level is depopulated. So this rate is minus dNB over dt. And this equals, let's first consider spontaneous emission. This equals a constant A times NB. Do we put a density of states here as well? No, because spontaneous emission is oblivious of the presence of photons. It does not depend on the presence of photons. It only depends upon the number of electrons that are in the higher level and some constant A. But there is also the process of stimulated emission. So we can write a term for the stimulated emission B, B, A, N, B, rho, omega. So this is the rate of absorption and this is the total rate of emission. And A or B are constants that we want to find. And this terminology A and B was introduced by Einstein. Now in a state of equilibrium, the rate of absorption must equal the rate of emission. So 